So what financial saving tips do you need to bring your finances back to life before the end of the tax year? Now this video is due to be published at the beginning of March. So that's only going to give you 25 working days to work out how these tips are going to be put into practice before the end of the tax year on the 5th of April 2024. So no excuses. Now the Chancellor of the Exchequer will deliver his spring statement on the 6th of March around 12.30 in the afternoon. So if there are any major changes to the content of this video, I'm going to make sure that I'll record a very short video for you to highlight any of the most recent changes. Now regardless of what happens in that speech, the principles of maximising your allowances and your thresholds has been a long-standing and prudent staple of successful financial planning. So welcome back to the channel and if this is your first time, a very warm welcome to the Economies channel where together we're going to be learning the language of money and wealth. But we're also dedicated to mastering money and making financial wisdom available to all. Hi, my name is Simon and I'm a Chartered Financial Planner here in the UK. Now in our most recent video, we covered a pensions masterclass for beginners and we also included an explanation of the UK state pension system and all of its challenges. But don't worry if you missed them, I'm going to add a link at the end of the video, so please make sure you watch until the very end. Now today we're going to be diving into an absolutely crucial topic as we approach the end of the financial year in April 2024. So yes, you guessed it. It's time to start talking about making the most of your finances before the tax year finally wraps up. Now please remember, the personal allowances that you're entitled to are reset in every new tax year. So they are based on a use it or lose it system. So once they've gone, they are gone for good. Now I know that taxes and personal finances might not be everyone's cup of tea. So I'm going to try and make this as engaging as I can and in plain English. Now before we move on to that, imagine just for a moment the feeling of peace of mind and financial security that comes from knowing that you've maximised your savings and reduced any unnecessary taxes. Well, that's what we're aiming to do in today's video. So first things first, let's talk about conducting a personal financial audit. Now this isn't just about knowing where your money is, but it's understanding how it can actually work better for you. But let's face it, we both know that you've worked hard to get those savings together in the first place. So for example, which bank accounts do you use? What type of account is your savings in? Is it instant access or is it a term deposit account? So who is your workplace pension with and do you have additional personal pensions scattered around? Now how much are they all worth when they're added together? How are your investments performing? Have you got sufficient life insurance in place to protect you and your family and is it of the right kind and for the right amount? Do you have an emergency fund and does it cover three months of your regular monthly outgoings? Now if you have a will, when was it last updated? And if you don't have a will, why not? Now try and consider this video as taking a map on a treasure hunt. You need to know exactly where you're starting to find that pot of gold. So for starters, let's dive into your savings and we're going to talk about the personal savings allowance. Now did you know you could earn up to £1,000 in interest on your savings tax-free if you're a basic rate taxpayer? Yep, yeah, that's right, £1,000. And for higher rate taxpayers, that's £500. So what that means is if you are not maximising this opportunity, you're essentially leaving money on the table for the HMRC. Now, at the time of recording, many bank accounts are offering close to 5% interest, or in some cases, even more. What that means is, if you've got £20,000 saved at 5%, this is going to give you £1,000 in interest, and this is the maximum you can actually receive before you need to declare this interest and pay income tax on it. So next up are ICES and junior ICES. Now, as we all know, these are our tax-efficient superheroes. With ISAs, you can save up to £20,000 a year without worrying about tax on any interest, dividends or capital gains either. And for the little ones, junior ISAs offer a fantastic way to start their financial journey early 
providing a £9,000 annual limit. So imagine that, you're actually being encouraged to give your children, or even your grandchildren, a head start in life. Now you may need to consider putting any excess savings into an ISA, as any interest received will be tax free, and that is likely to grow quicker thanks to the magic of compounding interest. Now remember, Albert Einstein compared the magic of compounding interest as being the eighth wonder of the world. And here's some proof that he actually said that. So whilst we're on the topic of savings, let's not forget about your emergency fund. Life is full of surprises and sometimes not good ones. Life is also unpredictable. So having between three and six months worth of expenses tucked away can turn a financial crisis into a more manageable situation. Don't forget, it's not just about saving, it's about safeguarding your peace of mind. Now we have covered this in previous videos, but it's a shocking statistic that over 8 million people in the UK have got no savings at all. And the overall state of savings in the UK makes very troubling reading. So if you've already taken those tough steps needed to have a higher cash balance, you may need to consider this. The Bank of England has increased interest rates 14 times from December 2021 to February 2024, where interest rates are currently being held at five and a quarter percent. Now, with those with high borrowing, this has been absolutely devastating, but it's also been very positive for those with very high cash balances. So with inflation at 4% at the time of recording, you may be enjoying real returns on your savings for the first time in a very long time. However, for many economic reasons, which I'm not gonna go into in this video, the mood music is changing. So it might be that the next move for interest rates is down. And that will mean the interest we receive on your bank accounts is also going to go down. So you might want to consider diversification. Maybe it's time to look at investments that can offer better returns over the long term. And that is going to be the subject of next week's video. So please consider liking this video and subscribing so you don't miss that valuable content. So remember, planning is about making your money work as hard for you as you have done for it. So let's move on to workplace pensions. Now, if your workplace pension offers a matched scheme with your employer, are you taking full advantage of it? I mean, this is essentially free money, people. So increasing your contributions to get the maximum match from your employer is an absolute no-brainer for long-term savings. Now, this applies to both employees in a workplace pension, but pension contributions are also a major, huge benefit for the self-employed and also for limited company directors as well. So if you do want to make an additional pension contribution into your workplace pension scheme, and it does have matched employee contributions, the calculation may look a little bit like this. Your contribution is £100. The tax relief on that is £25 and the employer match contribution is £100. So what that means is the total combined contribution is £225 a month. So I ran this mini case study through a savings calculator on the internet just to see what the result would look like. So if you're 30 years old and you've got a 35 year time horizon to age 65 and you manage to achieve an investment return on these contributions of 7% and that is lower than the long term average allowing for fees and charges, that could generate an additional pension fund of £405,237. Not convinced? Well, I ran this case study through another savings calculator and got a very similar amount, which I'm gonna put on screen. And that figure was 387,245 pounds. And the difference between those two figures is how those savings calculators calculate when the interest is actually paid. But what difference do you think that amount of money is gonna to make to your retirement plans and your future financial security? But before we move on from workplace pensions, if you only do this workplace audit, you're going to be well on your way to a more secure financial future. So ask these questions. Will your employer make matched contributions? 
Who is your pension provider? What are your and your employer's current contributions? How and where are your contributions being invested? Are you in the default fund or a lifestyle fund? What other investment options are open to you? And how does your fund's performance compare to the benchmark? But let's not forget company directors either. If you're a company director, then you may know that a pension contribution is an allowable expense within certain rules. So I'm going to keep this example simple for illustration purposes. So please follow along as we go through. Let's assume that your company made a £100,000 profit. Corporation tax is on a sliding scale, but we're just going to use 19% for this example. That means you're going to have a corporation tax bill of £19,000. However, if you make a pension contribution of £25,000, for example, this will reduce your profit to just £75,000. And this in turn will lower your corporation tax by the amount of the tax saving on your contribution, which is 19% on £25,000, or your saving is £4,750. So in this mini case study, you get to make a £25,000 pension contribution for your financial future, whilst paying £4,750 less in tax to the HMRC. Now I mentioned that corporation tax is actually assessed on a sliding scale, so the overall tax savings could actually be a lot higher. Now essentially this is a golden ticket to allow you to build additional and significant savings, and this is a win-win, and that is a very rare thing in today's world. Now this rule is also going to apply to those who are self-employed as well. But if you are self-employed, don't overlook claiming for your other allowable expenses. So remember, every legitimate business expense that you claim will reduce your taxable profit, and that means you're going to pay less tax. So it's not just about earning money, it's about keeping more of what you earn and making smarter choices to provide a stronger financial future for both you and your family. Now here's a quick note for the married couples or those in a civil partnership. Have you explored the marriage allowance? Now if one of you is earning less than the personal allowance of 12,550 and your partner is a basic rate taxpayer, you can effectively transfer a portion of your personal allowance to your partner to help reduce them with their tax bill. Now Mark Twain was credited with the immortal line, nothing in this world can be said to be certain apart from death and taxes. Well, on the Economies channel, we're all about love and saving taxes. So speaking of love, let's also not forget to check those tax codes. A small error can lead to paying much more tax than is necessary. So make sure you give your tax code a glance. If you do take advantage of the marriage allowance, that could be your partner could save a tidy little sum of £252 a year. Now a standard tax code, if you've got one job, is 1257L. So please make sure you check that on your payslip. Now here is a real life case study, which I worked on last year, but clearly I've changed the names of the clients. Now this couple, let's just call them Tim and Emma. Now they were hardworking, diligent savers, but hadn't looked into their finances too deeply due to life taking over after the birth of their daughter. But after a simple personal audit, which we talked about here today, we discovered that they were not maximizing their ISAs. They had overlooked the marriage allowance and Tim wasn't claiming all of his allowable expenses as a self-employed food distributor. But by following these simple rules, he found that he did actually have some additional money at the end of the month, and he was able to contribute more into his personal pension. So fast forward a year, and with a few tweaks and a few adjustments, they're able to significantly reduce their tax bill, boost their long-term savings and their pension contributions, and they even started a junior writer for their daughter, Betty. In short, it was a game changer. Now financial planning is not magic, but it can sometimes have magical outcomes. So as we edge closer to the end of this financial year, let's make a deal together. Let's commit to not just dreaming of future financial security, but actually taking positive steps towards it. Conduct that personal audit, explore the allowances, and make your money work for you. 
Remember, it's not just about the numbers, it's about building a future that's secure, that's prosperous, and is full of possibilities. Now you've got the power to make this year your best financial year yet. So make sure you let me know what actions you've taken and what effect that's had in the comments below. Now if you like what you see and you like what you hear, please consider giving the video the thumbs up and hitting the like button. Now we are going to be creating videos like this every week, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of this content. And finally, this is your channel, this is your voice. So if you've had a positive experience around money, or even a negative experience, then please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time and for your patience, and I'll see you all next week.